Welcome back, everybody, to Rantpocalypse Talks The Walking Dead. I'm Justin. Hey, I'm Kelly, and we are related, by the way. I'm the mom, he's the son, and we like to talk about The Walking Dead. Yeah, it's one of our all-time favorite TV shows. I would say it's The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones. Yeah. Those those are our two favorites, bar none, probably the best uh, things on television. Westworld's quickly coming up there for me, at it's least. An, I don't an, know. No, it's enjoyable. I'm, I'm enjoying the Westworld. Uh, but as far as... Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead, oh, it's going to have to go a ways before it can compete with that. Yeah, it's all about the characters to me. And Walking Dead and Game of Thrones have characters that we are so emotionally attached to. We love these characters. Game of Thrones has been doing what Walking Dead just did to us for quite some time now mm -hmm. with the uh, really beloved characters. And they have seem to sustain themselves over these six seasons. Yeah. So... I'm very curious to see how The Walking Dead is going to fare now that we've lost Glenn and Abraham. It's going to be very tough. But what we're here is to answer a question that has been posed by lots and lots of people, apparently. Lots of fans, um, lots of non-fans that watch The Walking Dead to basically hate on the show, yes, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like the uh, parental council thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? what? Well, you, well, your kids some, shouldn't be watching it anyway. Don't yeah. move on, move on. That's it is very <laughs> uh, weird though to think about. It's a Sunday night show at eight o'clock. I feel like uh, back when I was a kid, Sunday night shows at eight o'clock were like the Disney movies okay, or something. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that is family time. Come yeah. on, kids. Let's let's get in front of the TV and let's watch your buddy Glenn get his head bashed in. Yeah, watch his eyeball mm -hmm. damn near pop out of his head. It is it is weird when you think put it in that context mm -hmm. and think about it in the sense that. Yes, there used to be much more wholesome, you know, wholesome things on TV. But, you know, things on TV, they're more real these days um, <laughs> in the sense of, you know, zombies are coming out trying to kill people. <laughs> no, I just mean in the sense of I feel like the TV is better at depicting how we interact in real life, um, how we talk to one another, how we would react in certain situations. Now, hopefully we'll never uh, run across some crazy psychopath named Negan that has a barbed wire baseball bat that lines us up and bashes one of our heads in because I don't want to live in that world, really. No. I want to live in the zombie apocalypse, but I'm more so like, hey, let's all work together and kill these motherfucking zombies. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's my take on that. But yeah, so we're, we're wanting to discuss the question of did The Walking Dead go too far in the season seven premiere and was it the dreaded term that gets used for a lot of horror movies these days of torture porn? Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Do you think that The Walking Dead, did they, did they take it too far in the season seven premiere? Was it too much? Uh, it was pretty awful. I mean, that was terrible. I don't think I've ever, and even comparing it to Game of Thrones, uh, the Red Wedding, we talked about that. I don't think the Red Wedding was as bad. No. Watching two people that you really love have their heads bashed in, that was pretty awful. Yes. But I don't think they did it strictly just so that they could be awful. I don't think that was their goal. Do you? <laughs> it's... I'm, I'm actually kind of torn on this. A part of me wants to think that this was all scripted, that this was all a part of the, the narrative that they'd been building for multiple seasons now. And, you know, if, if we are led to believe some of the actors and some of the people associated with the show, um, because Michael Cudlitz and Stephen Ewan both said that they knew about this. Mm -hmm. I think Stephen Ewan said he knew about it at the beginning of right. season six, and mm -hmm. Cudlitz knew about it pretty far along into season six. We're led to believe that they didn't just do this for the ratings, which were tremendous. It was like 17.1 million people watched it live and everything. The other part of me says, why did we need two deaths? Why did they do that? I don't know. I, I think a lot of the people are upset, and I think a, a main reason why something like The Red Wedding doesn't disturb you as much as this did is because with The Red Wedding, it was boom. It was sudden. It was quick. You didn't right. have time to think about it. And it was just over in a flash. And you're like, what the shit did I right. just see? Like, right. holy crap, Catelyn Stark's dead. Rob Stark's dead. Rob's wife's dead. And the baby like, was cut out. And, yeah, yeah, and the baby was cut out. It was it was just, it was brutal. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was, it was a gut punch, much like this is, yeah. but it was super quick. And with The Walking Dead Season 7 premiere, it was this whole feeling of dread for seven long months of just like, 
tension. You know, you 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 felt just this weird queasy feeling inside oh, yeah. of yeah. of I'm anticipating this premiere, but I'm anticipating seeing somebody get their head bashed right. in. I know. And the sad thing was, is we knew that it was going to happen. I mean, we knew yeah. that. And we kind of had a sneaking suspicion of who it was going to be, because unfortunately there were some spoilers out there. So by yeah. by June, we had a good idea that it was going to be two, and it was going to yeah. be Abe and Glenn. But it didn't matter to me, even even with the idea that I knew. Yeah. Once it happened, it that was unbelievable. Uh, I I felt sick to my stomach. I literally thought I was going to throw up. I no, it was. I don't know anything I've ever experienced on television that way. No, I I can't think of any. The only thing that to me comes close to that is is the the Saw movies or uh, you know something like a Hostel, but I think of I think of Saw say like three through whatever it is now as yes I consider that a torture porn movie. But if you look back, uh, Saw one was the only one I could watch. I mean, it was a little bit too much for me, um, but. I loved it. Like it had a very good story, even though it was it was very intense to watch some of the scenes that went down in Saw One. Uh, so I don't consider Saw One torture porn or anything. I don't think that this this episode did it just for shock value. I mean, I definitely think that it was shock value in the sense of we wanted to shock our characters on right. the show right. and traumatize them and put them in line and make it where. We we've got a there's a new dynamic going forward on the show. There's a new regime and it's Negan's regime, and we as viewers and them as characters mm -hmm. had to be shown the error of their ways that they've kind of been erring on the bad side for quite right. some time right. now. I don't know. It's 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 a tough question to answer of whether or not it was it torture porn was it not torture porn. I think that I think it was more. It's I think it's on a fine line to yeah. me. Right? Like I don't. I think you you could argue one way, and you could argue I think you could argue both ways. Yes, you could. Totally I think I think so too. And to fall heavily on either side uh, would be silly because yes, because it is so arguable. No, no, that's not a word. Argue, <laughs> arguable. Uh, Argue, arguable. <laughs> and I have friends that are huge, huge fans of the show that I'm not sure if they're going to keep on watching after Sunday's episode. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what the numbers are for next week, um, whether or not it's a super dramatic drop, but... I think it's going to go up. No, I think I the don't... numbers will be higher. Oh, I don't think they're going to be higher than the 17 million. I think it's. I think that we're going to see a, a pretty drastic drop in the sense of from 17 to, say, 14 million. I think okay. it's, it's going to be somewhere around in that range, but... We have made bets on these throughout the years... And I, they're talking about this stuff on on CNN and Fox News, and there's yeah. you know I mean it's just it's it's right up there with the bullcrap that is our political season. Yes, I I feel like that does attract a lot of viewers. It does, but I think a lot of people tuned in because they were they had been building this up. They wanted to see even people that didn't watch the season six finale. I think tuned in for this. <laughs> you know, people that maybe watched it on Netflix and they're like, yeah. "Shit, I've got to find this out. I'm gonna go be like yeah. me and pick up Sling because I've got to watch it live." Right. Um, you know, so I, I I think it's it's going to be a drop off. But um, so here's what you can do for us people. So we've got to make a bet. I don't know what the wager is. You guys can help us out with the wager. And so in the comment box down below, we'll we'll take whatever you guys say as far as comments on what one of us has to do if the other one is wrong. So you're saying it's going to be more than 17 million and I'm saying it's going to be 14 million. Okay. Okay. So like in the 14s. Right. Okay. It's in the 14s. Okay. So but yeah, I don't I don't I don't think that it was torture porn. I, I think in end of story to me it, it wasn't completely torture porn it was rough yes it may have been dragged out a little bit in the sense of it took so long to to get those kills over with but i think it they kind of had to do that with the fact that they did they chose to do the exactly. cliffhanger exactly you know? they had to build it back up for us if exactly. they would have opened with it it would have been like Whoo, got that out of the way now let's move on but instead yeah. i mean you know we felt awful. We felt what they felt that sitting there for that yeah. length of time wondering what was going to happen. Um, again, the two death thing, yes, that is where maybe they crossed the line. 
Yeah. But as far as Glenn goes, I mean, it's in the book. So Yeah. And I, I've seen people, like, there's articles out there. This one says, The Walking Dead Quitters Club, Goodbye for Real, is the article title of that one. The Walking Dead's most shocking reveal, a once great show, sinks into torture porn. Great yes, clickbait. that's what I was going to say. Great it's clickbait. totally clickbait. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, those people can go. It, it, after the second episode, because I need those numbers to stay <laughs> yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get, gotta keep those numbers up. <laughs> tell your friends. Be sure to tell your friends. <laughs> yeah. View. For, yeah, yeah. Watch the show for <laughs> Kelly, but no, no. Uh, some of y'all drop out for me. Um, I think that I think the the underlying point and theme of episode one is that the show is back to being about Rick Grimes. And that is the focal point of the entire story of The Walking Dead is Rick Grimes. And sometimes we get away from that. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that, that that brought it back home of this is just destroyed Rick. And I feel like it had to be the brutal way that it was because of some of the ways that Rick has treated his enemies mm -hmm. in the past. And now I think that this will uh, give Rick some humanity, I think, going forward in the future to say, like, shit. I, maybe I shouldn't take a red-handled machete and slash some dude's head off just because he was trying to survive in right. the zombie apocalypse exactly. as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let us know what you guys think. Did, was The Walking Dead Season 7 premiere torture porn? Did Scott Gimple and Nicotero and crew take it too far? Let us know in the comment box down below. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. We hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye-bye. See ya.